Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Hey, everybody. Welcome to our newest issue of Data Movers. I'm your host, Jaden Spadakataya, CEO and founder of JSA, along with my fabulous co-host, top B2B social media influencer, Mr. Evan Christel. Good morning, Evan. Hey, Jamie. I love being called fabulous. It's the only place I get called fabulous is here on Data Movers. But great to be here where we sit down with the most influential men and women in the data center and telecom space, uh, supporting the infrastructure requirements of this new normal. Jamie, uh, speaking of new normal, what, what do you do with your money? Do you hide it under a mattress or do you put it in 401k or what, like what's your, your uh, savings investment strategy? Yeah, there's there's a mattress um, involved. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> I always feel a little dubious. Um, I'm, uh, this this crazy world we live in. I don't know. Um, but no, actually, we do we do have a 401k plan here at GSA that we we match, which we're very proud of. Uh, but yeah, go ahead, Evan. What do you do with your money? Tell me all the things I should be doing. Well, I was just curious because I, I was reading this morning, 20% of Americans now have money in Bitcoin. So it, th that would strike me as mainstream uh, in terms of uh, crypto adoption. So I was curious if you're a Bitcoin holder or a wannabe crypto enthusiast. Well, it, it blew my mind today when uh, I, I read that one Bitcoin equals $39,360. So... Yeah, I should have rode that Bitcoin phase, I don't know, a couple of years back now. 39,360 bucks. I think it's a little too rich now for my blood, but holy moly, I've, I've, I've missed yet another Wild West series here, I think. Well, um, you missed it or you saved yourself from losing money, but it's definitely going mainstream. I was checking my Robinhood account and uh, uh, Bitcoin, my wallet is there. You can also buy Bitcoin on Coinbase. It's in PayPal now. It, it really is uh, a phenomenon that's not going away. And um, we all have these alternative coins too. So brave new world. We'll have to do a show on crypto at some point, which is pretty relevant to the data center world, believe it or not, in terms of mining and Oh, yeah. and, uh, and crypto management. But let's get on to our guest, far more uh, relevant and interesting, to be honest. I, and, you know, uh, the story here is connectivity and uh, and how do we even power uh, cryptocurrency um, or um, keep the world connected and so they're not draining us all. I don't know when that story is. But it leads us to this fabulous guest, again, fabulous, um, uh, that I can't wait to introduce y'all to, Mr. Jim Nolte, CEO of Bandwidth IG, joining us today. Jim, welcome to Data Movers. Thanks so much. I appreciate the time that uh, you guys are putting in here. And I, uh, you know, I, I've actually never been in the audience of an influencer before, and nor do I believe I've been called fabulous. So <laughs> those are two great firsts for me today. Well, thanks so much. And you're, um, you have operations both in Atlanta Georgia and California. So let's play That's favorite. Right. So which is your favorite uh, destination? Oh, I can't do that. I can't <laughs> do that. What kind of question is that? Yeah, can't do that. <laughs> of course, they're both exactly. great markets. Yeah. They're both uh, they're they're vastly different, but both great markets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, in that case, tell us more about your two locations, about <laughs> your background, and what led you to start uh, Bandwidth IG. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I'm a. Uh, so I'm a Jersey guy, originally from New Jersey, and uh, I started with AT&T in 1985. So way, wow. way, way back. Um, and nobody should be doing math right now. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I realized after about 12 years of working uh, at AT&T that I was not a big company guy. And I went to work for a couple of smaller firms like ICG and AGL Networks out of Atlanta and uh, eventually got acquired by Zayo. So I, was, I retired from Zayo in 2016. Uh, two years later, I got a call from some old friends who asked me to participate in uh, uh, doing some diligence on a dark fiber business. And uh, what we discovered in the course of the diligence was that the demand for bandwidth was growing faster than the supply and uh, that the condition of existing networks, which in many cases were 20 plus years old, was just falling short of quality. Yeah, and quality is a big concern here today, especially in uh, fiber connectivity. 
uh, keeping those data centers and enterprises connected. But uh, at what point did you see the need to build new dark fiber networks in line? Uh, well, we, you know, we see the world, um, we basically see two types of businesses in the world today. We see uh, those that have digitally transformed uh, and those that are on the journey to digital transformation. So in both cases, their data intensity is, is growing enormously, right? Um, and as a consequence of that, the, the process to, uh, the need to process, move, store that data becomes an even more critical business function. So uh, that's all putting a ton of pressure on the network and, uh, and we don't see that slowing down near term. So as we, you know, um, as we've been in business over the past uh, 24 months, we've, we've actually found we've got customers deploying uh, gear to leverage C plus L bands and uh, pushing 30 terabits per second on a pair of fibers, which is an enormous amount of bandwidth that, that you can only get uh, with a brand new network. So. Uh, these are the things that are playing through for us in terms of why it makes sense for us to deploy brand new infrastructure in these markets. Fantastic. So speaking of those markets, you serve Silicon Valley, you serve Atlanta, yep. two very exciting uh, destinations in terms of the economy. And you've also expanded uh, both networks and congratulations on that. Thank you. So why, why those two markets? Uh, what's unique about those uh opportunities in those metros and are there other expansions on the horizon that you're looking at yeah there are uh, other expansions nothing i can talk about at the moment but uh, we certainly see uh, these these types of characteristics playing out in other places in the country um, but we saw the bay area and the atlanta metro as being neglected for the most part we saw uh, an enormous amount of data center development going on so you know considerable amount of investment there uh, without the corresponding signal of investment from the incumbent network providers. So um, that led us to think that, you know, there may be a good opportunity here. And as we got into the market, what we, what we constantly heard was there were four key things that customers were focused on when sourcing network. One is, you know, the first one is they need low signal loss. Second is low latency. Third is maximum diversity. And then fourth is inventory. And, and the problem is, uh, you know, many of the incumbent networks were just unable to meet those four key needs. So uh, signal losses, you may know, goes up when you, when you introduce splices into the network or you try to mash incompatible cables together, which many of these incumbent networks, um, you know, had to do. So uh, latency goes up when you have to take an indirect route between sites. Diversity becomes a risk when your network is riding in the same ditch as everybody else's network. Um, and an inventory is a problem when, uh, you know, when you realize that a lot of those companies placed those networks 20 plus years ago when there were only 400 million people on the internet. Uh, today, there's 5 billion people on the internet. So 400 million people, you sit and you size it up and say, well, let's put 144 or a 288 count cable in the ground. And that should suffice for many, time, many years. Um, we actually have customers today that are taking 144 strands on their own in a single path. You know, I, I love how you, you divided it down to those core four, if you will, the signal loss, latency, lack of diversity and, and, and inventory. Um, and really those become even more paramount uh, of importance when uh, technology continues to evolve. We have things like 5G, AI, IoT, really becoming uh, more used, more widely used. So when we talk through uh, these new technologies, what do you think in terms of this new fiber networks? How do you think they're going to evolve accordingly? Uh, so I, you know, I, I think uh, this is this is going to sound. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to scoff at this, but uh, I, I throw out the D word from time to time when I when I'm talking about this, and and that is uh, decommission. So I, I believe that a lot of these incumbent networks are going to be forced into a situation where they actually decommission segments of their network. Uh, in order to make room for more advanced infrastructure down the road. Um, you know, there's 20 billion devices connecting to the internet. So you think of Internet of Things, that's, that is a population of 20 billion devices right now, and it's forecasted to grow to 80 billion in, by 2025. So, um, and it, you know, it may even grow faster than that. 
all of those applications that all those devices are touching all have to go back through a data center in some way, shape or form. And that's the sweet spot that we focus on is making sure that the connectivity, the fabric between the data centers is robust and able to scale and, uh, and, and, and secure. And so those are the things that we, we stay focused on. That's a great point. I mean, even if you look at 2G and 3G networks, they're already being decommissioned around the US and the world. Right. We're realizing coax and you know DSL are, aren't sufficient uh, to, to many homes, particularly you, you know uh, high growth areas. Um, so throughout the pandemic, you know we saw this demand spike. Anyone with teenagers uh, or working from home will, will have seen that personally. But what right. did you observe with your customers and, and prospects? What what was the demand spike like, and what what kind of services did they? ask of you? Yeah, we, uh, so um, as I mentioned, our primary business is connecting between the data centers. So as, uh, you know, as I noted before, every, every application runs back through a data center, right? The, our customers were uh, constantly evaluating application performance and, and they would reach out to us from time to time for additional fibers, which in many cases, uh, since we were already pre-populated, we were able to turn up in just a handful of days. So that, that was what helped meet their needs. But uh, at the end of the day, we really, we started the business about six months before the world shut down. So, um, you know, we were fortunate to be in a position to be able to answer those calls uh, in a meaningful way in the, in the probably the first six to nine months of this serious pandemic that we're facing. Yeah, of course. And, you know, um, when you're talking uh, connectivity between data centers, uh, of particular note is, is dark fiber. And I don't think it's a topic that um, we discuss enough uh, in our industry, uh, the mainstream for sure. Um, what resources does Bandwidth IG have available um, to help your, your prospects, your potential customers understand the difference between older options and then this alternative Bandwidth IG option? Yeah, it's a great question. We, uh, you know, so we, our, our JSA team, has done an exceptional job of making sure we have a fulsome set of resources out on our website. So our website is bandwidthig.com. Um, and uh, we've got blogs, we've got white papers, we've got press releases, we've got a video that we just did that uh, helps explain the business in a little bit more of a fulsome way. And then, and then of course, I've got an exceptional team of people who are more than happy to talk about dark fiber with anyone who has any questions that are um, that aren't answered in those documents or, or that uh, they need more information on. Awesome. Well, let's, let's learn more about, uh, you know, who is Jim Nolte? I assume you're not related to Nick Nolte. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't gotten a Christmas card from him in a while, so uh, I'd say no, probably okay. not. Well, good we do have some rapid fire fun facts and maybe sure. tell us the first thing that comes to mind, uh, your favorite place to travel to. Ah. Uh, you know, uh, my wife and I have a house in Naples, Florida, so we, we, we have a hard time comparing Naples to all these other great places out there, but we're starting to fall in love with Hawaii, actually. After the last uh, PTC, we spent some time in Maui and, you know, saw the whales and all the other beautiful uh, scenery out there. So I'd say, I'd say Hawaii at the moment. You can't yeah. go wrong with Hawaii. I want to spend yeah. some time on uh, Larry Ellison's island there. That, that looks pretty good. <laughs> right. Yeah. We see. Uh, what's the last book or audio book or podcast that you uh, consumed? I'll, uh, so uh, admittedly, I am, uh, I, I hate business books, um, but I just stumbled over a book and finished it uh, in a matter of days called Working Backwards. I, I can't remember the name of the authors, but uh, these are two guys that were senior members of uh, Amazon. Um, and uh, it basically describes the thought processes and the frameworks that they use to make decisions at Amazon. So brilliant read and, and uh, really well-written book. All right. Uh, are you a golfer? You I am a golfer. I will. I'm a hacker. Okay. So what's your favorite <laughs> course? Uh, Bandon Dunes. And my friends would tell you uh, it's because I actually played well there. So, which is unusual for me. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I see you're on Twitter. I'm actually just started following you there. Oh, anything you saw on social media recently that made you LOL, as the kids say? Oh, man. I, uh, I saw a video of a woman who um, 
uh, it looked like she was in Asia and she and uh, somebody drove by on a moped and tried to nab her purse. She ended up knocking him off the moped and stealing the moped. Ah, that was my mom. Karma's <laughs> <laughs> a bitch, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, thanks so much for joining us, Jim. And it was great. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, the work you're doing is extraordinary. Thank and you. Also great hearing how Atlanta is your favorite destination. Always <laughs> 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 like to get down to hot Atlanta down, especially in the winter where it's it's pretty chilly up in Boston. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, no, thank you so much for your time, both of you. I uh, I appreciate it and uh, uh, look forward to uh, another session down the road. Absolutely. All right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Evan and I like to play East Coast versus West Coast over here. Um, and uh, thankfully, we have been with IG in both places. So That's thank you right. again, Jim. Uh, we look forward to our next session for sure. And guys, if you enjoyed listening to today's Data Movers podcast, reviewing us, I sure hope you did. Um, go ahead and check us out for more episodes, jsa.net slash podcasts. Every week, Wednesday mornings, we release them. So go ahead and check us out. Additionally, go ahead and and follow us on Twitter. We've got, of course, the very famous Evan Postel at Evan Postel and at Jay Scotto for me. And I'm going to say at this time, happy networking. Okay.